Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Oscar Mikey and today I got 50 tips and tricks for you on Zero Siever. All these tips and tricks are going to be based around the current build of the game, which is 0.40 at the time of this uh, video. So if you're watching this sometime in the future or the game has been updated, a lot of these things might be different. Anyways, not wasting any more time, let's get right into it. Number one, you can press Y to change your ammo types. Whatever weapon you're carrying, make sure you have the different ammo types with you in your inventory and all you have to do is hit Y to bring up a little list above your character's head. Use the scroll wheel to pick which ammo type you want, and then hit Y again to load it into the gun. Number two, when you're starting a new game, you can change all kinds of things like values and quantity of loot that spawns in, damage multipliers for yourself and for enemies, hardcore settings like dropping gear on your death, or even permadeath. This game does have a permadeath feature that you can enable at the start of a playthrough. But once you begin that playthrough and get started with it, it's all gonna be locked in and you can't change it after the fact. Number three, when you come across a couple of lootable containers in the world that are kind of close together, this could be anything really. It could be a couple of bodies that are close together, two filing cabinets that are uh, next to each other, like close by. You can walk up to them and you'll have two options to loot above your character's head at the same time. You can use the scroll wheel to select which one you want to loot first and then hit F to loot it. And then afterwards you can scroll over to the other one and loot that. Number four, you can click and drag meds down to your hotbar and you can use them really quickly by hitting that, that key, whichever one corresponds to the med that you drag down there. And you can also use the hotbar for your grenades too. Grenades are a recent addition to the game. You drag a grenade down to any of your hotkeys and you can use it really quickly with that button. Number five, when you use scopes, your shots basically have no travel time. If you place that crosshair right over your target, there's gonna be no travel time you don't, and you don't have to compensate for the target's movement. Number six, when you start a new playthrough, the weapons that you get at the very beginning won't be loaded. So make sure you reload them before you go into raid or at the start of a raid when you go in. Number seven, you can sleep in any of the beds in the bunker. It doesn't matter which one. Number eight, you can place markers on the map to help you with wayfinding. So you can mark things like extracts or points of interest for your quests and stuff like that. Number nine, there are a few different types of bullets for each caliber in the game. First one, you have your basic rounds, which are usually some kind of like PS rounds that do uh, your base weapon damage and a certain amount of penetration. And then you'll have low recoil rounds, which are usually subsonic rounds. They'll have a lot less recoil than standard rounds, but the trade-off is they'll do less damage. And then you'll have your high flesh damage ammo, which is usually HP rounds. Those will do a lot of damage to unarmored targets, but will struggle to get through uh, armor. They don't have very good armor penetration. And then you have your high armor penetration rounds, which are kind of the opposite of the HP rounds. They do a lot of armor penetration, but they do have a little bit of reduced damage. Number 10, to attach mods to guns, you don't always need to remove uh, the current mod to attach the new one. You can just click on the new one and it'll replace the one that's currently on the gun. The main exception to this is that you need to remove like muzzle devices, uh, grips and handguards before you can change the barrel of most weapons. Number 11, you can enable or disable the Fog of War and Cone of Vision in the settings if you want. Number 12, in the hardcore difficulty, you'll lose everything on your character except for keys when you die. If you want to go that extra step and lose the keys, you can enable that too in the settings before you start your playthrough. Number 13, you can actually turn on a heat map in your inventory that'll show you a couple of different things. All you have to do is open up your inventory and then on the bottom left, you'll see a total of like your, your inventory weight that you have on your character right now and your total rubles, your, basically your bank account. Hover your cursor over one of those and it'll show you a heat map corresponding to whichever one you pick. When it comes to your kilograms or your uh, total carry capacity, everything highlighted in red is really heavy and everything highlighted in green is really light. If you're looking at your rubles, then everything in green is high value and everything in red is low value. Number 14, you can get skill respect books from the barman. Number 15, there is in fact an extraction point in the mall basement, but it needs a key. Number 16, you can split stacks in this game. To do it, left click and hold on a stack of items, drag it to another cell in your inventory, hold control, and then let go of left click. Number 17, it's actually kind of easy to get around anomalies in a big radiation field. You can press G to throw bolts that will help you identify like where anomalies are in a radiation field. And anomalies themselves don't give off radiation, so you'll be safe if you get close to them. 
Number 18, to reload your guns, you only need the ammo in your inventory. This game doesn't have any kind of like mag management system. You don't need to fill up magazines to use with your guns. You only need the bullets in your inventory. Number 19, weapon and armor repair kits are usable in raids. So if you find them and your gun or armor is in bad condition, you might as well use it right there in raid. Number 20, with the recent changes to the weapon range and recoil and stuff like that, you're gonna have a chance to do more damage to your target if your crosshair is white and placed directly on top of your target. If it's red, you're probably gonna be doing partial damage. Number 21, after an emission, radioactive rain will come in and it'll be endless and maximum intensity, so you better get out of there quick. Number 22, installing modules in your hideout is kind of a pain in the ass, so I'm gonna show you how to do it right here. Make sure that you have all the materials that you need to craft the module that you want to make, and make sure you have enough space in your inventory. Modules take up a 3x3 cell space. Craft it up and the box will be in your inventory. Now press J to go into your PDA, and click on the little button that looks like a house. This will bring up the module slots in your hideout. Click on an open slot in your stash, it doesn't really matter which one, and then click on the icon that matches the module you just crafted. There's going to be a little line of text that appears above that saying hold to install. Click and hold on that text until the progress bar fills up all the way. And now the game knows to install the module in that space. Close down your personal device, right click on the module in your inventory, and then hit use. And boom, the module should be installed in your stash now. Number 23, your reputation with the different factions determines what kind of gear you can buy from them. As you progress through the game and you do quests for these different factions, you'll unlock new gear, the higher tier weapons and armor and stuff like that, as your reputation increases with like the Green Army, the Loners, and the Crimson Corporation. Number 24, bonuses from the shooting range don't stack, so don't think you can install multiple shooting ranges and get multiple like extra points of shooting damage in your, uh, in your character's stats. Number 25, you can't add or remove weapon parts and accessories in the middle of a raid. So if you pick up a nice gun with a bunch of lasers and lights and scopes and stuff on it, you can't take those individual attachments out. You have to take the whole gun out. Number 26, bosses will sometimes fight other NPCs and sometimes you can find them already dead. Number 27, to craft better ammo, meds, and food, you need to level up by reading their like respective skill books. So you need to install things like the ammo producer, the infirmary, and the kitchen in your stash, but you also need to level up those skills to unlock the more advanced ammos and meds and stuff like that. Number 28, Makeshift Camp is the only map in the game with two bosses at the moment. The first one, the OG, is Armin. He's kind of a crazy guy. He's a little bit on crack. He's very erratic, he has very twitchy movement, and he has a sniper rifle called the Winter BK. It's kind of like the Vel, except it only uses small magazines, but it does a lot more damage. The second boss is a newer addition, their name is Oral. They live in a bandit stronghold on the west side of the map. It's kind of like a converted train station. Oral uses the FRD, or it's kind of like an SVD sniper rifle. With the new changes to the gunplay, he can snipe you from pretty far away, so be careful on your approach. And watch out, he's got like 20 level 2 bandits uh, guarding him as well. Number 29, in the description window for a lot of attachments, which you can get to by just hovering your cursor over an attachment, it'll say inside that window exactly what weapons that attachment is compatible with. Number 30, you can craft stims in the game, but only if you take the pharmacist specialization. After that, you need to level up your medicine skill with the medical books that you find and get as quest rewards sometimes to unlock more rare and higher value stims for crafting. Number 31, right now in the game, ghouls are the only enemies that will run at you for melee damage and do range damage. Number 32, all night vision goggles illuminate the same area around your character, the same like physical space. The difference between the three night vision goggles is the clarity. So level one has the grainiest picture. Level two is kind of in the middle. It's kind of grainy, a little bit clearer than the first one. And number three is pretty much perfectly clear. Number 33, there's a total of 12 modules you can build in your stash, but there's only six spaces total in your stash, so you gotta pick your modules carefully. Number 34, when an airdrop comes in, loot will slowly disappear from it the longer it takes for you to get to it. The sooner you get to it, the more loot you're gonna be able to take from it. Well, at least we got the... Oh my god, it's already like almost empty, what the hell? Wow, okay. Number 35, infestations will spawn three waves of ghouls. After you kill all the ghouls, you can walk right up to the infestation and it won't harm you in any way. You can just stand next to it and blow it up. Number 36, objects in the world like concrete slabs and wrecked cars give off a lot of radiation, so don't stand too close to those things for very long. Number 37, cash registers are lootable in this game. All the cash registers in all the stores in the mall, for example, those are all lootable and you can get cash. Number 38, 
cash that you get from cash registers used to be worth like one to one in their ruble like value, but now it's only worth about like around 20% in value. So if I get a full stack of 999 uh, cash units in my inventory and I sell that to one of the traders, they'll give me about 219 or 220 rubles back for that entire stack. Number 39, the doctor can repair your armor and heal your health and radiation status, but for a pretty hefty price. And number 40, the barman can refill your hunger and thirst, but this is actually pretty cheap. Number 41, at rep 250, factions are no longer hostile to you in raid. Number 42, you lose two points of rep every time you kill a member of each faction. Number 43, there's actually two red stims in the game. They look exactly the same, so you might not have noticed, but one of them gives you higher maximum health, and the other actually gives you regenerating health for a short time. Number 44, most weapon attachments weigh exactly 0.1 kilograms, regardless of their size. There are a couple of exceptions to this, like a couple of the drum magazines I know weigh a little bit more than that, like 0.3 kilograms. But for the most part, like 90% of the attachments, regardless of their size, will weigh the exact same. Number 45, enemies can't see you as well at nighttime, and they don't aggro on you until you get a lot closer to them. Number 46, Mr. Junk and Igor are marked permanently on the map after you speak to them for the first time and survive that raid. Number 47, equipped weapons actually don't take up any of your inventory weight counting towards like your backpack. Number 48, the Green Army sells AK type weapons and like Eastern European style weapons like ECMs and EC74s and using certain calibers like 545x39, 762x39, 762x54R and that kind of thing. The Crimson Corporation sells more NATO type weapons, so 9x19, 556x45, 7.62x51 and so on and so on. Number 49, the game uses randomly generated maps. So every time you go into a map, the layout will be slightly different. The same key points of interest will be present, but they may be in different places from the last time you went to that map. And number 50, when you go into an extraction zone, you can actually stop the timer by going into your inventory. This is a really great way to get extra loot in a raid, especially if you have a small backpack and you can't carry so much weight. Go into an extraction point, hit tab to go in your inventory, and drop all the gear that you have on you in the extraction point. Then quickly run out of the extraction point, go back out into the map, gather a bunch more loot, go back to the extraction point, open up the box that you left in there, fill it with all the loot that you got from that second run, run back out of the extract and go get more loot and just keep doing that repeat until you fill up that box. And that's a great way to maximize your gains out of a raid, even if you have a small backpack and can't carry much on your character. Well, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Hopefully you found something that was interesting or helpful for you. And hopefully you can use some of this information on your raids in Zero Seaver. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate you. Like the video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this in the future. And thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate you. And I'll talk to you in the next video.